Hey everyone, so I'm going to show this tutorial right away and um, it's basically just Diablo movement. So if I hold my left mouse down, you can see that my guy follows it. Um, I've only clicked once so far and he's still following. And uh, if I left click on a probe here, I'll get the little bar and he'll start attacking the probe. And I can stop of course and keep walking around. And as you see by this little icon here, my right mouse is on charge. So if I right mouse on this guy, he'll charge on him and he'll keep attacking. And um, the way this was set up was actually took quite a workaround because you can't detect where the mouse is uh, using triggers. So um, you'll actually find it pretty funny with how I figured out how to do this. Um, probably not the best way to do it, but I think it's the only way right now. Um, but maybe people can build upon it and find better ways of doing it. Um, but it basically involved making a drone at every, every grid spot on the map and then making them all invisible and then detecting when you mouse when you highlight a unit and then making your guy order to that spot. So basically I have like a million drones in the background in the on screen right now but are just hidden. Um, setting their actor opacity to zero. And um, this isn't gonna be a UI tutorial so there's there's nothing there's not gonna be anything about doing like uh, the spell bar or whatever that Diablo has. These are just sort of placeholder stuff. I mean the goal of this tutorial is to show you how to do uh, the, this kind of movement style and this kind of attack style. Um, and it's going to be a sort of different tutorial. I mean, a lot of my tutorials you just have to go through and follow me, but uh, in this one it's going to be like my WoW RPG tutorial where I'm sort of just going to explain what I did and then you can download the map and go through it, use it for it, whatever you want, or expand on it and actually make a Diablo spell bar. Because um, the biggest problem I've noticed, and nobody's actually figured this out on the SC2 Mapster forums, is how to do, um, how to do mouse detection like this. Um, and this is a pretty big workaround I did, but for now it's pretty cool. And I'm only lagging right now because I have Fraps recording my screen. But uh, if I didn't, this actually doesn't lag that much at all. It doesn't lag at all. I mean, I get like 60 frames per second. So uh, I'm going to go in, in the editor now and explain how, how this works. Uh, so to start, um, you'll see on the map right here, if I press C, um, I have one camera which is a little bit zoomed in than the typical, that's the typical camera, and if I click here you can see that uh, it is a bit zoomed in and it is a bit more overhead like this kind of thing. Um, I just did that to kind of replicate Diablo a bit more. Um, not too important, you can mess around with that. Uh, the other thing in here is that, um, let's see, um, well let's see, let's go into data. Uh, in the data editor, um, what I've changed is, let's start with units here, uh, ignore Supply Depot, but the Zealot is your guy, and um, what I did here is under his flags, I turned off, uh, let's see, where is it? I made it unselectable checked, so that you can't select him, um, because if you do, then it kind of makes, it, you can see the movement uh, order things on this, the, little, the little lines to where you're targeting, and it looks ugly, it kind of takes away the Diablo look, so it's good that you can actually select your guy, because all the ordering is done through triggers. Um, I don't think I changed anything else on him. Um, oh, I did change his behavior response and combat default to choir level, so uh, he doesn't auto attack. And his charge ability, I did change it so it doesn't require uh, the charge research in here. In the command buttons, you just press a little X here and it gets rid of it. And then I also changed his weapon to uh, scan filters to not have anything checked here. So he won't automatically scan and target enemies. And if you wanted to make a Diablo map, you'd do that for all your heroes, except then you'd leave like your enemy enemy units to still have the scanning because you want enemies to auto-acquire you, but you don't want your guy to do any auto-acquiring. Uh, what else did I do? The probe. The changes I made to the probe, I believe, was just to turn on the tooltip. Um, oh yeah, and I changed the attack ability too, to just uh, have no scanning going on or no smart filters. I unchecked everything. But the probe, I, uh, I went to his flags and I uncheck cannot be highlighted, so you can highlight him. Uh, that's important. You want to highlight, do that for every mob that you have in your uh, in your Diablo map if you're making one or with this system. And also, I believe I checked something else. I unchecked no tooltip, so you can get a tooltip on him. And that's all I did there. And then the drone is the pretty important one. Um, the drone is what I use. Like basically, my trigger will make a drone here, a drone here, a drone here, a drone here, drone all the way to the end of the line, and then go to the next line and make drones. Go to the next line, make drones, and then it makes them all invisible, and then it fakes the sort of uh, most most movement that you do in Diablo. And the reason for that, as I mentioned, is because you cannot do uh, you cannot detect your mouse position. So 
uh, you can't, if you wanted to do like uh, the way Diablo has where you hold the mouse down and your guy moves around, you can't actually do that right now with triggers. Um, because you can only get the mouse position when it's clicked and you're not clicking if you're just holding down. So back in the data editor, the drone, um, I made his height a little bit lower and uh, just, just so he doesn't interfere because one current flaw I'm having is that uh, when you're in here playing, and you mouse over those. There's an invisible drone actually covering like half of this probe, just because uh, the drone has a higher. The drone just is sitting there invisible, so you won't actually click the drone, the probe here, until you're just at a certain point. So maybe somebody else can find a better model, like a supply depot lowered to place on, along the map hidden. Um, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll show it in a second. Um, so I did change some flags on them. Um, cannot be highlighted. I I cannot be highlighted. I, I uncheck that when it's usually checked. I checked invulnerable because the, the drone is like my hidden unit so if you're making this map you'll probably have to use the drone or find a, any unit really that's kind of flattish and and can be created a lot of times without too bad of effects and um, I checked all these stuff here so you have no idea that it exists and uh, not on the radar I checked that and in the actor uh, no nothing in here matters so now for the important part, which is the triggers. Um, so to start the game, I hide the UI, apply some camera stuff, pan it to the to your Zealot guy, um, follow the Zealot, then lock the camera input. And now here's the interesting part. So I go, I do a loop from the, from the uh, first spot in the top left. So from this spot right here, or it might be this spot here. Um, it's going to start from one and go to integer width of the entire map and it's going to increment by one and then every time it goes but then in each of this it's going to go and do um, the height of the entire map so this is a double loop if people are not familiar with that um, which means that it's basically going to if I if I only had one of these if I took out this one here it would just do uh, one line but because it's a double loop it's going to go through each for each of these X spots in the map it's going to go one across here, then it's going to go across here, it's going to go across here, across here, and so on, and fill the map with drones. And then for each drone that it creates uh, at the point, it's going to set, send an actor message to set opacity. Um, and I believe I made it to zero. Yeah, it sets the opacity to zero, and then it sets the minimap visibility to disabled. So you can't see them on the, you can't see this wall of units on the minimap, which was a bug I had earlier. And um, and then I do some dialogue stuff. This isn't important. Um, this is just crappy dialogues I made to sh to show like your default attack and your charge ability. Um, no, no really dynamic abilities through that. So, anyways, the important part here is left mouse down. Uh, when you click left mouse down, we're gonna set this very this boolean uh, variable to equal true for player one. Uh, there is only player one player right now, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Yes, yeah, so we set that to true, and then we check if your highlighted unit is no unit. And you'll see this trigger here. Um, whenever I highlight a unit, um, it's going to check that it's a drone, and then it's going to check that whether these are left mouse um, left mouse is already down or right mouse is already down. Um, and if it is, then it's going to order your zealot to move to the position of the drone. So what that means is that if you're holding your mouse down, every time you highlight over a new drone, it's going to order your guy to move there. So it sort of simulates like it's following your mouse. Um, and this is, like I said, because we can't actually follow the mouse. There's no trigger to get the mouse position. So this trigger actually does that. Orders your zealot to move to the position of that dr that drone we just found. And if it's not a drone, then we'll just set player one's highlighted unit to equal triggering unit. So if you, mouse, if you highlighted the probe, your probe will get set to this. And then when you mouse down on a probe, um, it will go to the else spot and then order your guide to attack him. With the left mouse, that is. Um, I mean, sorry, in here. It'll order your guide to attack him, it'll display a boss bar, and it'll set boss bar on is equal to true. And then it'll, uh, these two actions actually prevent um, prevent the uh, the green box when you drag over units. You know how usually you have a green dragging box when you want to select multiple units. Well, these two actions, just putting them here, uh, will prevent that little, that green box from dragging when you drag. So, because uh, it's kind of ugly when you're making a Diablo map. And if if you do have no units highlighted, then it's going to just order your guide to move to where you were, move, put the mouse. Um, and then when you lift up the mouse button, we set the boss bar on to equal false. We hide the boss bar. Oops, I'm going backwards. So we set the most left mouse down to equal false. And we order your guide to stop because we don't want him to move anymore. 
And when I do the same thing for rightmost, I basically just copy paste it and change this to be rightmost down and set this to rightmost, etc. And then, uh, yeah, and then the unit's unhighlighted. Uh, whenever you un, oops, whenever the event happens that you unhighlight a unit, we just set it your player one's highlight unit to equal no unit, and that just that's just to clean up so that uh, so that your guy won't start moving again instead of ordering to attack. And I hope I've explained this well enough. Um, the reason I'm not doing this in a ground up tutorial video is because it's quite long and it's quite difficult to explain while I'm doing this because this took quite a bit of figuring out. Um, I think the important part for people to see is that. I am using a gimmick here to do this, which is creating a drone at every point on the map, and then detecting when you highlight over a drone, and then ordering your guy to move there. Um, which is a pretty ugly workaround, but it works, and uh, and it doesn't lag that bad at all. I don't think it lags any more than a regular game because the opacity is at zero, and you can actually you can't just hide the unit or uh, or make them cloaked because then you won't get the highlighted event. This event will never get triggered, but the nice thing is if you set their opacity to zero, they're still going to get highlighted. And you can't actually set, you can't set the drone's model to be invisible. Um, there's an invisible model that you, that's in the, uh, that's in the data editor and you can't actually use that, it won't highlight. And to just prove this, I'm going to delete these two, uh, two lines. And now you can actually see, uh, see how it looks when they're not invisible. See how it actually works behind the scenes. Okay, it's a bit laggier now. Um, but you can see this is what was basically going on behind the scenes um, when I first demoed this map is that there's a bunch of drones here that you can't target, can't select, can't highlight. I mean, you can highlight. And um, our trigger is every time I highlight a unit, it's actually, and, uh, and my mouse is down, it's actually going to order my guy to move there. So as you can see, as I highlight these units, my guy's being ordered to move to each one spot. And with the opacity on zero for them, um, it makes it look like your guy's following your mouse. And uh, if you put your mouse over the probe, it switches to do attack instead of move. And that's basically the gist of this. Um, the rest is for you to download and look at and use if you want. Um, I know it's a workaround, but this is basically all we have to do Diablo movement at the moment. Um, I couldn't find anything on uh, searching SC2 Mapster forums for how to do detect mouse movement. So um, this simulates it pretty well. And uh, yeah, I hope people can find a use for this because it's sort of an obscure tutorial, but I know a lot of people would love a Diablo map. Uh, so I hope someone finds use for this, and uh, thanks for watching. Download the map in the description. And I just wanted to mention that uh, for the drone unit, you actually want to have no collision on it. So if you go to the movement uh, fields in its in its unit, the drone unit, in the data editor, you make make sure you make it like mine where it's all like zero and no collide with ground and all that stuff. So, And uh, I also want to mention that I did modify some stuff in the data editor about cursors and the camera, the default camera. Uh, the cursors was just to make uh, the, the cursor not change when you highlight over allied and enemy units. And the camera stuff was to make it so it follows your guy pretty uh, pretty quickly rather than slowly. And you can look in the, uh, in the camera tab of the data editor if you need to, to see what I changed. Um, but yeah, that's about, those are all the extra things that I changed that I forgot to mention. Sorry about that.